Well, I don't think any of us saw this coming. You know, it's been a weird couple of years, but SeaWorld potentially buying Cedar Fair might top the charts. This just in per an article posted on Bloomberg that SeaWorld has made a $3.4 billion attempt for the entire Cedar Fair chain. They had become their majority shareholder by offering $60 a share, which for reference, after this news broke, Cedar Fair stock jumped to about $55 a share. And if this happened, it would give SeaWorld full control over everything. They could do whatever they want. It's basically the theme park equivalent of when Disney bought Fox or Lucasfilm. But it is in my opinion that this would not be a good thing, which I mean, when you first hear this, you're like, oh sweet, this would mean that I'd only have to get one season pass. I could get into Cedar Point as well as SeaWorld Orlando. Well, yes, that is true. But as far as I'm concerned, I think that would be the only benefit to this. So let's break this down. Why SeaWorld would want Cedar Fair. The first obvious thing is that SeaWorld wants to grow their company. Now, why SeaWorld is trying to do this now is beyond me. I don't think they need to do this, but we have seen SeaWorld do many things throughout the past several years and attempts to grow. The thing is, it hasn't been consistent. And I think that really comes down to like SeaWorld's leadership. Their whole corporate team has not been stable. I mean, how many times have they swapped out park presidents and CEOs? And it feels like it's been that way ever since Blackstone sold them. One of the advantages to Cedar Fair is they have always been stable and consistent. And as a whole, their company plays it very safe. They're very conservative with their moves. They're not like Six Flags where they're ballsy, just trying out new things. So if SeaWorld acquired Cedar Fair, they'd know what they're getting and their parks look very attractive. Almost all of them are extremely well run and they would actually fit decently well into the SeaWorld portfolio. Granted, none of them have animals or anything. And if this happened, that's not saying that suddenly they'd start putting orcas or dolphins into any of these parks. What just means that when you go to a SeaWorld park, you're going to see nice landscaping. Everything is well maintained. It's visually pleasing to look at. Cedar Fair does the exact same thing. Sure, maybe there's some things here and there that they could do to freshen up some of the parks, but when you step into SeaWorld or Busch Gardens, they're seeing this premium experience. It's not quite to the level of like Disney or Universal, but I mean, you step into SeaWorld Orlando, you're paying like over $100 for one day. That's why the passes have always cost more. If you get a SeaWorld Platinum Pass, you might be paying $400 to get access to three SeaWorld parks, two Busch Gardens parks, a couple water parks, and coming soon, two Sesame parks. When you buy a Cedar Fair Platinum Pass, once you do add-ons like dining and stuff, you might reach that $400 level, but you're getting a lot more parks. The value overall is better. The thing that's just so fascinating to me is that SeaWorld has been budget cutting things lately. That could be because of COVID or with staffing or them just trying to save a couple bucks, but a lot of things are inconsistent. I mean, this past year, Busch Gardens Williamsburg felt like a mess. Half the time I'd go there, like one restaurant was open. So it makes me a little concerned if SeaWorld started running both companies, what happens to some of those Cedar Fair parks, especially the lower tier ones. Each of the SeaWorld parks are very nice, but I mean, you put a place like Michigan's Adventure in the hands of SeaWorld Entertainment, I mean, we just don't know how they're going to treat it. Honestly, they might treat it better than Cedar Fair does. So if your home park is a place like Michigan's Adventure or Worlds of Fun that hasn't gotten a big new investment in quite some time, maybe you really want this deal to go through because it means your park might get a little bit more love. The other thing that I would question about is the intellectual properties that these two companies hold. SeaWorld, as we know, uses a lot of the Sesame Street characters and Cedar Fair is Peanuts, you know, Snoopy. So what happens there? And I think at the end of the day, it comes down to whether this is a takeover or like a merge. Does SeaWorld completely absorb Cedar Fair and the Cedar Fair name is no more? Or is it like Disney and Fox, where like Fox is just kind of rebranded, it still exists, they just report back to Disney. If that's the case, then they might not be affected at all. Now, what I think is so interesting about this is that, you know, this is not the first time that we've seen a large scale acquisition attempt within this industry, and specifically these chains. Back in 2018, Six Flags tried to buy SeaWorld, which we joked about that at the time saying, that feels like it should be the other way around. In 2019, Six Flags made an unsolicited bid for Cedar Fair, and that was for $4 billion. This is for $3.4 billion. So Six Flags was offering to pay more for Cedar Fair. And that was another situation where some people were saying, well, wait a minute, shouldn't Cedar Fair be buying Six Flags, not the other way around? So it seems like everyone's trying to buy each other out. Obviously, those other two attempts never came to fruition. And personally, I don't think this one will either. You know why? In an acquisition like this, who wins and who loses? The winner is SeaWorld. The loser? is us, the customer. And here's why. Competition. If you have the SeaWorld and Cedar Fair parks merge to be under the same ownership, there won't be that same sense of competition. We see this every time a new roller coaster is added. What record can we break from our competitor? Exhibit A, Valraven, was built to outdo Sheikra and Griffin from the SeaWorld parks. 
Exhibit B, Iron Gwazi is literally one foot taller than Steel Vengeance, so Busch Gardens can say that they have the tallest hybrid coaster in the US. And really, where this comes down to happens to be with my home parks, Kings Dominion and Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Right now, they are operated by Cedar Fair and SeaWorld, and they're located an hour away from each other, and they are in constant competition with each other. Each of the parks are building different attractions, trying to do things that are different from the other, and they each thrive because of that. They're successful in different ways. If they're owned by the same company, I think that would go away. And we have past examples of this to prove that. Prime example number one, Cedar Point and Geauga Lake. Granted, Six Flags was kind of the downfall of that, but Cedar Fair was finally the one who said, we don't want Geauga Lake around anymore because it's competing with Cedar Point. We want to put all the focus on that. And the same thing actually ended up happening with Astroworld. Millions of dollars were being poured into that park, and then it was dead a few years later. I'm not saying that's going to happen here with Kings of Mayor Busch Gardens, but I do think it's very possible that the amount of investment being poured into each of the parks would change. Another group who will probably suffer because of this, the vendors, the different manufacturers or companies providing the rides and attractions. Many of these companies have specific people that they go to for this sort of thing. Prime example number one, SeaWorld has been working a lot with Premier Rides for some of their attractions. But you know who they've never worked with? Gerslauer. You know who has worked with Gerslauer? Cedar Fair with rides like Hangtime. Cedar Fair loves working with B&M to build giga coasters. These huge giant investments, when was last time SeaWorld did that? It's what keeps us as enthusiasts coming back to these parks because they each offer something different. So you remove that factor and that's too bad for the customer as well as the manufacturers. They need the work. So I think final take, you know, personally, I don't see this happening and I would have a lot of concerns if it did. It's possible everything might be totally fine, but personally, I like that the companies are different from each other. You get different benefits with each. Yeah, it means you have to have more than one pass, but you know, I think it's worth it considering the value and the different types of experiences that you get with those parks. I don't think I want them to all be run by the same people. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. We know that Cedar Fair is reviewing this. They're legally required to, but it's completely up to them to accept or reject this offer or do some negotiation. And I think it'd be a slightly different scenario if SeaWorld were trying to acquire just a couple parks from Cedar Fair not the whole company. Maybe Cedar Fair's like, yeah, sure, you can have Worlds of Fun, like whatever, who cares? But SeaWorld wants the whole company and I just don't know if I see that happening. So I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments below. What do you think of all this? What are some of the pros and cons you see? And of course, when we hear more, we'll be sure to post about it. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more rumors and news here at Coaster Studios and we'll see you next time.